Let me show you a strategy on how we can simplify a square root versus a cube root. Let's do k square root of 40 versus the cube root of 40. Begin with this one. How can we simplify square root of 40? Do we know what square root of 40 is? We don't, because 40 is not a perfect square. However, we can break this apart. To do that, we ask ourselves what times what uh, will give us 40. And then one of the numbers shall be a perfect square, because we know perfect square in the square root will give us a nice number, such as square root of 25 will give us a nice number 5. Okay? So we ask ourselves, what times 12 give us 40? And one of the numbers should be from here. And even though 2 times 20 is equal to 40, but then 2 is not here, 20 is not here, because they are not perfect squares. To break this apart, let me look at this as 4 times 10. 4 times 10. And I will write this down as square root of 4. We put down the perfect square first because this is going to give us a nice number right away. And then the square root of 10, the number of square at the end. This right here, square root of 4, as I mentioned, it's going to give us a nice number, which is a 2. Right? Square root of 4 is equal to 2. And then square root of 10, we just maintain what it is. So the simplified diversion for square root of 40 is just going to be 2 square root of 10. This right here is it. And then right here, when we're talking about the cube root of 40, we have to refer to the cube root table. And we do the same thing. Look at 40 and then ask ourselves, what times will give us 40? But this time, one of the numbers shall be from here, a perfect cube. And I notice right away, 8 times 5 will give us 40. So I'll look at this, and then I am going to write down the cube root of 8 times, technically I should emphasize this is multiplying, times the cube root of 5, 8 times 5 inside will give us that 40 that we had. For the first part, we know this, right? That's a nice number 2. So we can write this down as 2, and then we still have the q root. And make sure you write the little 3 really small for the radical, right? This is the q root, okay? So the result of this, the q root of 40, it's the same as 2 q root of 5. This is the simplified version of that. And the strategy is, look at the square root table or the q root table, and then whenever you encounter a q root of a non-perfect cube, or square root of a non-perfect square. You refer to the table accordingly, and then you think about what times 4 will give you 40, what times 4 will give you the number inside. And one of the number, in, in the square root case, one of the numbers should be from here. By the way, you never use 1, because 1 doesn't do us any good. That's why I crossed out the 1. I just put a 1 there so I can have a nice table, but we never use 1. And then likewise, when you have the q root, you ask yourself, what times 12 will give you the number inside? And one of the numbers should be from here. And put down the perfect square with the perfect q first, because they will give you the nice number right away. This is the idea. That's it.